Welcome to a new web design tutorial video. In this one, I'm going to take you through my process for designing a landing page using Sketch. If you're not familiar with it already, Sketch is a piece of design software for Mac and it focuses on digital design and it's what I use to design all the websites that I work on. I've previously done a video that I called Sketch 101 and in that video I went through all of the basics of how the tool works, what all the different panels mean and how you use all the tools and things like that. So if you're not familiar with the software already, I would recommend checking out that video first. It'll be a really good introduction to it and it'll get you used to using it so you know where to click for things. In this video, I want to dive straight in to using it to create a landing page. So if you've never opened Sketch before, then check out that basics video first. Otherwise, let's get into it. Before we dive into Sketch, I just wanted to note that my web design process doesn't start on the computer. It doesn't start in Sketch. It actually starts with a pen and paper looking something like this. I always like to wireframe a website before I go in and design it on the computer because I feel like once you're making boxes and you know aligning things to a layout grid and things like that, you can tend to focus on getting things too perfect rather than just getting your ideas out first and foremost. And so just a regular piece of paper and a Sharpie really helps me do that. As you can see, you don't have to be good at drawing to wireframe a website. This is a rough outline of what we'll be designing today. I'm going to be designing a landing page for a font that I'm making at the moment and will eventually be selling hopefully later on this year. So that's what I wireframe thinking about what information that I need to give to people about my font and the different packages that I'm going to be selling. And every landing page needs to have a main goal and obviously with this landing page the main goal will be to get people to buy the font. So all that to say that before you dive into Sketch and start mocking up a landing page I want you to really think about the content of that page first and what information needs to go on it and it really does help to do that in wireframe form. All right now that that rants over let's dive into Sketch. Okay so here I have set up just a new document with a desktop HD artboard in it. Remember, if you want to create an artboard, you just go to insert and add one through there. The very first thing you usually want to do with any form of design really is set up what grid you're going to be working to because with design, you want to know the rules before you break them. And in web design, especially working to a grid is really useful for when it's going to be built. Most of the sites that I work on use a bootstrap grid. So I like to mimic that in Sketch. If I turn on the layout grid here using control L, you can see that this is set up with 12 columns and this is the width of a bootstrap grid because I have it set up as a default. These are my grid settings here if you want to take a screenshot and copy them. What's really handy about Sketch is that if there is a certain grid that you always find yourself using then you can just click this make default button and it'll be there on any new artboard and document that you make. All right so what I do first is basically create a digital version of this mock-up here. So I'm just going to make some gray boxes essentially to put things in the right place. What I just used there to get that placeholder text is this plugin called Craft, which is made by Envision. Um, I'm gonna go into that in a bit more detail later on though, so don't worry about that for now. So what I've mocked up is a header space where I know I'm gonna have a photo of some sort, a headline and a button probably with the call to action on it. In the next section, there will be a little bit of background information about the font and some details on a few of its special features or like, you know, special parts to it. And then ending the page, I want to have a section with the different packages that I'm going to offer. And I'm not quite sure what's going to go on these cards yet here, so we'll work that out together. And then very last, there is just a small footer with a few links to my website and things like that. So as you can see, I've created this wireframe just by using rectangles and text boxes, essentially to make a slightly tidier digital version of this wireframe. As you can also hopefully see, I've tried to stick to the grid for a lot of the things that I'm laying out just because it's going to help me later. So when I made the boxes for these which will be images or screenshots or something in here, I made sure to put it over four columns. So now we have a digital wireframe and it's time to get into the fun part of making the high fidelity mock-up. I did want to walk through this though because this is my exact web design process and you have to remember that design isn't just the visuals and how it looks at the end, it's the whole process that goes into the planning and the thinking about the information structure and things like that. So 
Taking the time for these wireframes to really think about where your information is going to go is really important. When I come to doing this high fidelity mock-up stage, I tend to just work from the top down. So that's what we're going to do. First, we're going to tackle the design of this header section. So if I come over to Illustrator here, this is your first preview of my font that I've been working on. It's obviously not finished. Right now it's just an image trace from me drawing the font on my iPad. So there's a lot of refining to do to turn it into an actual font that will actually be used. But yeah, this is what I'm currently thinking of calling it. I'm not entirely sure yet, but this is what we're going to go with for now for the purposes of making this landing page. So what I'm going to do is just copy these letters and bring them back into Sketch. That's a really great thing about Sketch is that you can copy and paste from Illustrator. Sometimes things get a little bit like, I'm going to say janky is like just a good word for it to explain, to be honest, where it does these things when it puts them in clipping masks. Sometimes that can mean that your shape isn't seen. So sometimes I like to just come in and tidy that up by taking those clipping masks away. So this guy is going to be essentially the title of the page. I don't want to take him about that much space. Probably be a line of text underneath and then the button. I mentioned this in my uh, Sketch 101 video, but what I love about this software is that this panel here adapts to be whatever you're working on, like whatever thing you have selected. So if I click into this guy here, I obviously can't change the font of this because it's not text, and so it doesn't show me that. And I really like that. I think it makes the most useful information and the things you can edit apparent to you and like easy to access. I want to give this button here slightly rounded corners because I really like the way it looks. And so to do that, I'm going to come into the rectangle and just change the radius here to five pixels. Now I'd like a photo to go in the background here because I feel like that will look more dynamic. Um, if you have an exact photo you want to use, you can just drag it in and use this rectangle as a mask. Let me show you how I do that actually. So if I grabbed this image here and dropped it onto my canvas, obviously it's going to appear super large because the photo is much bigger than that. Now to use a rectangle or any shape really as a mask, you just have to select the two items and go mask. So anything that I added in this group above here will be confined to that rectangle shape. But let me just turn that off for a second because I want to show you another thing that you could do if I just draw another rectangle here. Oh, and bring it out of the group. There we go. <laughs> so this craft plugin that I mentioned briefly before is by Envision and it's essentially for filling your designs with content. That's the best explanation I can come up for with for it. Um, it also does things like yeah, duplicating content and a bunch of other stuff that I don't really use, but this is the section that I tend to use the most. Basically all these sections here fetch example content and put it into your design. So usually you don't use this for the final outcome, it's just for in the mock-up stage when you're not sure exactly what the text will be yet, which is what I've done here and here. But what you can also do is browse the web with it and find a photo that will insert into the box. So let me head to Unsplash. And now, for example, I've found this image. All I have to do is click on it and there we go. Craft will fill in my rectangle with that photo. So now like that's the contents of it in the fill that you see over here. So that's pretty handy for when you're mocking things up. It's a great way to fetch images from the web. Uh, obviously, you may have to make sure you've got permissions to use the photos that you want in your designs if you're you know, putting them live on the internet. But luckily, Unsplash is a site that does Creative Commons stock photography, so I tend to use it a lot. I'm going to make my title white. So I just select all the pieces and make it white. You can set up text styling within Sketch, which means that um, it would save this as a text style, so then I could come down and let's use this as an example so you'll be able to see it. I can apply it here. So that's something that I tend to use when I am working on the ConvertKit website, for example, and I've got a bunch of set styles in place that I already know I need to use. I think I'm going to make this button... I really want it to be purple, so we're probably going to change the photo. This brings up another good tip that I can share with you, this colour palette here. See this global colours and document colours? When you first open Sketch, those won't be there. These global colours here are the ConvertKit colour palette, which is what I usually work on, so I set them to appear in every new Sketch file. And these here are my channel branding, YouTube channel branding colours, and so I set them to appear just in this document. And I did that through a plugin called Sketch Palettes. 
you just have to load the palette here. Um, I have done a whole video about color palette management that will go into how to create one and save the file out and things like that. So that will be linked on a card for you to check out. Sketch is vector based software, but you would be surprised at how much you can actually do with image manipulation in it. So I'm going to make this dark purple. So I'm changing the color of that rectangle behind there. And now on the image itself, what I can do is check color adjust and drop down the saturation so that makes the image black and white and now I can lower the opacity which will let through as you can see the purple color that's behind it let me turn off my layout so you can see that better and that's control L remember so this is what we have currently for our heading um, the spacing is a little off there isn't it let's sort that out and here's a little secret about spacing is that I never bother to get it perfect in sketch um, something actually that people often ask me is if you can take sketch and export all of the code and suddenly have a website as far as I'm aware that's not how it works you can export the CSS of certain things um, not that I ever do it so I'm not entirely sure how that works but the point of sketch isn't to end up with a working web page it's a design tool it's for you to design the web page and then later on is when you think about building it if you are looking for something that just does all in one then maybe you could look at something like Webflow but I definitely recommend starting by designing the page first because I think you have a bit more freedom to move things around and get creative with it before you worry about exactly how it's going to be built. All right, we're going to leave that for now. That is a header of some sort. This section here, I think what I'm going to do is bring in some pieces of my font. There we go, this vector import has done the thing that I was talking about where it tends to hide it in the clip group. So if I just drag that J out, there we see it. I'm gonna edit these rectangles here slightly. So I'm gonna use a very pale gray and round the corners. Again, just using the align tools to get them sitting in the middle. Tip for copying and pasting things in Sketch. If I tried to just regularly paste um, in this block here, just by going Command V, as you can see, the styling stays the same because it automatically keeps the same style as the text block already was. And so if I want to copy text over with styling, I have to go Command Alt Shift V. A lot of characters, but it gets the job done. All right, I think I want to put a photo in here as well. I'm going to use the same treatment as above. And so I'll show you a tip for quickly replacing an image. If I just duplicate this block here and bring it down, we will just get rid of that gray box. What I'll do if I just shrink this up so it'll actually show you on the screen, there we go, is go replace image. And there we go. Now that image is in place of where the other one was. And it keeps all the same styling that I had on that one too, which is really handy. Obviously, I will probably use my real font some more within this design, but um, for now, it doesn't really exist properly, so I'm just using a different font instead. See, I'm just arranging layers by picking it up and moving it around. You can also go this move forward, move backward thing, but I would find it easier just to move them. As you can also see, I do not name my layers as I go. Uh, a lot of people would recommend that because it definitely makes it easier to find stuff. But to be honest, when I want to work with something, I just click on it and that's how I know what layer it is. But yes, if you do want to be more organized, I would recommend naming your layers. I'm going to copy this button that I made up the top here and bring it down into these groups. Okay, so now that I'm at the bottom of this page, and I'm seeing that I probably want my buttons to be purple. I don't want the footer to be purple because I want these to be the most eye-catching like links, things that you see that you want to click on. So I'm going to change this to be perhaps black instead. There we go. Don't you think that the buttons stand out a lot more now? For these boxes here, I want to make the corners rounded to match the buttons, but I don't want to round all of the corners because as you can see, these two here are joined. So if, for example, I put a five pixel radius on all of this, I would get this weird notch here where I don't want one. So instead of that, what I'm going to do is double click on this rectangle here and then see how these little anchor points come up. I'm going to hold shift and click on all three of them that I want to be rounded. And then I will type five pixels in. And if I click off, 
you can see that those corners are rounded and this one stays the same, which is exactly what I wanted. And I'll do the same for just this one corner here on this box and these two corners on this one. These three things here are my main like packages I'm offering for my font. So I want to bring in some icons, I think, to represent them. Um, for my font, I will get a piece of the actual font. This one, I think I'm going to offer some extra vectors with it, so that'll help you with your designs. Now, I have not made them yet, so as an example, I will just take, um, I guess, this guy here and I'll turn it on its side. Now, I'm going to use this here as a, I suppose, a little icon in between the two, so I kind of want it to be outlines. So what I can do for that is right click on it and just go convert to outlines and there, now it is a shape instead. For this last one I'm going to use a tool called Noun Project. Noun Project is a great place to go for icons. I have an account with them so I get this desktop Mac app here that I can just search for something and check this out if I can just click on it and drag it into Sketch and now it's a vector in there. But they also have a web version where you can download icons without paying and you just have to give credit to the designer. The idea of adding these things in here is to really drive it home that with this package here you get more stuff. That's why the box is taller, that's why there's more icons in it, and it'll kind of explain to people why it's a higher price. Speaking of prices, I don't know what I'm charging yet, but let me add a placeholder in. And I'm going to make the price purple as well because then it connects in their mind that when they click purchase now they're going to be paying that price. You can see that we've got a header with a super eye-catching image and a nice big button. That button is probably too big to be honest but hey it's fine for now. Um, I've got a block of text about the thing and then I've got some extra details and information. Then I have a subheading which will talk about the different packages and what you can get and then I have my packages here. One last thing I want to do is make that skateboard image in the background stand out a bit more. So I'm going to select these boxes. Let me bring my panel back in so you can see what I'm doing. In Sketch, I could change the opacity of the whole box, which would also change the opacity of the purple border that I have on it. Or I could just change the opacity of the fill. So I'm going to make them 90%, maybe 80. Mm, let's go 85. Now we can see a bit more of the skateboard behind them coming through and it brings in some more of that texture. One last thing I want to add is a shadow to my title up the top here just to make it stand out from the background a bit more. So I just take the shadow option and then I can play with it from here. I generally like my shadow to be coming from directly behind and then a little bit more blurred out. And if I just toggle this off and on you can see that adding it just really helps bring that text forward a little bit more and stand out. So I think I might do the same to the button here too. So there we have it. It's pretty simple, probably not the best thing I've ever designed, but I hope that it helps you pick up some design tips along the way. So that's a look at designing a landing page in Sketch. If you have any questions about this landing page design process, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments. I know I probably went through things very quickly and skimmed over some stuff, so please don't be afraid to ask. I am planning more videos about Sketch in the future as well. There's a lot I want to show you to do with uh, vector tools and creating shapes in Sketch, creating icons to do with mobile responsive layouts and things like that. So if that would be of interest to you, let me know down below in the comments and give this video a thumbs up, I guess. This tutorial was voted on by the people who have joined my Patreon, which is really exciting. They wanted to see a tutorial on Sketch and they wanted to see how to design a landing page. So that's why I did this. I'll also be sending the Sketch file out to any patrons in the Learning by Doing or Design Team Mentoring tier because that is one of the rewards. You get access to any of the assets that I create during my videos. Hopefully it'll be helpful for you to open up the file and look through it and see how I set things up, even use this as a base to design something for yourself if you want to, I don't mind. If you're not a patron yet and you'd like to become one, then the link for that is patreon.com slash charliemarie. Also, if you would like to be notified when this font eventually does go live for sale, because if you're watching this video in the future, who knows, maybe it is already, I don't know. But head to charliemarie.com slash font and there you can sign up to be notified. Or if it's the future, the font might be there for sale already. Okay everyone, thanks for sticking with me through this undoubtedly long video. Um, as you can see, the lighting has changed vastly because while I've been talking, it has become nighttime here in England. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go and finish off my work day. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!